All right, welcome to the lesson on creating a budget for myself. So what's your goal today? I want you to be able to identify income and expenses, the difference between them, and determine how much you have available to spend or invest. So basically what I want to just talk about in general is what is a budget and why budget. So uh, I talked about in an earlier video, a budget is a best guess as to how you will spend slash use your money. So uh, pretty standard when you're doing your budget, you're looking at, you're basically wanting to know where you're sitting, how much money you're going to have. So what I would uh, or what I would recommend in the future as you get a job and as you start thinking about moving out, it's going to look very similar to this. So you have your income. is probably going to be your main line here. And that will show how much money you have coming in. And then you start listing all the expenses that are, are going to happen monthly. So you're going to have your basic ones like cell phone, which should be a negative. Um, heat, so that could be gas, for example, depending on where you buy. Um, Hydro or electricity. Uh, what else should you need here? Rent or mortgage, depending on whether you're renting or buying. That'll be a fairly big one. You'll want to set aside for taxes. All right. Um, what else falls into there? There's a whole bunch of things that would fall in there. Uh, vehicle payments. Vehicle payments, and we've talked about um, appliances and stuff like that in the previous unit on on the cost and stuff like that. So you have a whole bunch, and, and it continues down. And the one I would really recommend that you do when you do finally move out or start uh, start getting a job is that you got to kind of you got to kind of plan for the future. And for you guys, it's always it always looks grimmer the younger you get. It seems. So in the future, what I would recommend is you add an investment column in here. All right, and because it's in there, it's standardized. It's part of your budget. You know you're going to be losing that money. So at the end of the day, when you get to the bottom of your budget, you're going to end up with either a positive or a negative. This will be leftover spending money if it's positive. So this is how much each month that you can go out and you can go see movies, buy clothes, kind of live your life. If you have a negative, um, spending too much. And that's when you start having to look at your lifestyle and start making changes. Uh, you can't run a negative balance. It means you're losing money. So it means that anything you had in savings is slowly being uh, whittled away until you have nothing left. So at some point then you need to revisit revisit and and change your budget okay you can't ignore this problem it's not something you can let slide so you need to go back you need to look at what can I change in my budget do I go to a cheaper cell phone plan um, do I choose a different apartment can I afford this house for mortgage a hey, vehicle did I buy too expensive a vehicle to maintain all right um, so that's something that uh, you're going to see some examples of budgets and stuff and I'm going to be looking at you to create one for yourself uh, and just talk about some of the things that you want. Now I want to talk about specifically the investment part. What you need to think of is the sooner you start putting money away for yourself, uh, the more, the earlier you'll be able to kind of retire or cut back when you get in the future. The rule of thumb, or I guess our rule of thumb, A rule of thumb is 10% of net income goes into investment. Okay. So a rule of thumb is 10% of your net income goes straight into an investment. And that could be RRSP, for example. So it could be stocks. 
could be RRSPs. Okay, you do have some options out there. Uh, TFSAs. And those are things that you need to look at in the grade 11, grade 12 course. We'll talk about those specifically. So in this course, we're just talking about how to skim that money away. Grade 11, grade 12 is going to talk or tell you how then you deal with that money. But if you can put 10% away each month, uh, the amount of money that you start saving grows. But you give yourself some flexibility because it depends on whether you're in school, part-time, full-time. But 10% will grow for you. I give you a graph, when you invest and you continue to invest, your growth, so this is how much money, and here's time, that money will grow for you. And it looks like a curve like that. It's what we call an exponential growth curve. So as that curve increases, or as time increases, you start making more and more money. Uh, why is it important to invest uh, earlier? Because the longer your money's invested, the more it will grow for you. Okay, so I'll do a couple of quick examples uh, for you, just so you can get a feel for the difference between them. Uh, you don't, you won't have to do these calculations. This is next year. I just want you to see um, if you were to invest. So let's say 10% of. Uh, let's let's say you're making. Uh, let's say it averages out to like 400 a week, and that's after deductions and stuff. So that would mean that. $40 a week is what it would come out to, okay? So if you're going to invest this today, so let's say I'm going to assume you are 16, let's say, okay? And we're going to invest this until you reach, uh, so we'll invest, invest until you are Let's keep it easy, 56 years old. Okay, so you don't need to know the formula. Okay, um, I'll, ta I'll take care of it for you. Actually, it, you'll end up um, 40, and you'll have a number in there. What I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to use the graph and calculator to do the calculation since I don't really care. Uh, how what formula you actually, or whether you know the, how to do it or not. So just hold on. So as I use the calculator, I'm using a financial app on it. The future value, so this is $40 per week for from 16 to 56, so that's 40 years. Okay. And I did it at a fairly low investment rate. I used 4%, which is uh, kind of a Canadian or Ontario savings bond or Canadian savings bond, maybe, uh, you would have saved up $205,400 in your investment. Okay? Now, if you figure, if you made $40 each week, so times 52 weeks times 40, so this is your dollars, that's weeks, that's number of years. How much money did you actually invest here? So if we take a look at that, so 40 times 52 times 40, you only put in $83,000. So over 40 years, you put in $80,000, $83,200, and you end up with $205,400. So that means that was a growth So how much did your money grow? Minus the 205400. So your money grew $122,200. Okay? So just by putting in $40 a week from now until you're 56, it went from 83,000. That's how much money you put in in total. You've got an additional 122,000. So you can see $40 a week over 40 years your money grew 122,000. Now let's take a look here. We'll make some other assumptions here. So what happens if you do not start saving when you're 16? Let's say you have to wait and say, okay, I'm going to wait till I'm 26, for example. Okay. So again, invest, invest until you're 56. So $40 a week for, so now you've cut it to 30 years. And I'll use the same percentage, even though it's fairly conservative for a long-term investment at 
that would mean that your investment would be worth, using the calculator again, this is something you're going to talk about next year in the grade 11 course. Um, now I'm going to go to 30 years and using the calculator, you only accumulate, it accumulates to $120,600. Okay, so doing the calculation, how much did you input? $40 times 52 weeks in a year, but now you're only doing it for 30 years. So now, 40 times 52 times 30, you put 62,000 in, 62,400. So your growth of, when you compare it, it's not even half. So you're looking at 58,000 and only grew. So you'd be 58,200 versus 122,000 from above. So when you compare those, it makes a huge difference. And even if I take it out one more second here, if I take it out, what happens when you hit 26? You say, okay, uh, I know I should have been investing earlier. I'll just double my investment. So same thing, assume you were 26. Now you're going to go to $80 a week because you know you're behind. All right, you're going to try to make it up for 30 years at 4%. So what does that mean? So you go to $80 uh, and what you find is, so you go to 30 years and you go to $80. Now Oops, use the calculator. Okay, moves to $241,130. So you've now caught up. You're actually gained. You're, you're ahead of where you would have been originally. But let's look at your inputs now. 80 times 52 times 30. So if we calculate that out, 80 times 52 times 30, you put in $124,000 of your own money. Okay, which means that your growth of subtract the 241 from 30, your growth is only 116,000, 116,300. Okay, so if you compare with above, so these are the numbers underlined. That's money that's not yours. That's money that was invested, uh, that you that your investment gained. Your $40 per week right now when you're 16, your money made 122000 and you only put $83,000 in. So 83000 of your money, okay, over the 40 years grew 122000 To get something that's close, that's pretty close, you almost, you invested, you got the same return, almost 120000 Look how much money you have to go in, put in though, of your own money. Uh, to gain back those 10 years that you've lost. So I can't stress this enough. This is something that you should be looking into as soon as you get a regular job okay, or a regular part-time job. You should be talking to your parents about setting up an RRSP or, start, or going to the bank or talking to someone about that savings. Because if you look at it, 116000 okay, to make the same amount when you're 26 versus 16, that's money that's not yours, you would have to invest instead of 83,000 now, you're going to invest 124,000. So you're looking at almost $20,000 difference for less savings. So it is very important, this investment. It is something that you really should look into once you get that regular full-time job when you're done school. Because it, what it does is it makes life a lot better for you in the future. When you have that money, uh, when you want to retire earlier, when you want to do cool stuff like travel and do whatever when you get to that age. So anyhow. Uh, most of the note is just going through dealing with the different income or different uh, expenses. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll uh, give you a hint.